All right. Uh, hi, everyone. We're presenting Exosphere. Exosphere is a user-friendly interface for cloud computing. My name is Chris Martin. I'm here with my colleague, Julian Pistorius. Uh, my background is building and operating cloud infrastructure for researchers um, with OpenStack and Ceph. Julian's is uh, helping people actually use it to get stuff done. Uh, we're taking the whole 10 minutes. Uh, so if you have questions, please chat them to us on the Scientific SIG Slack channel um, or on Matrix. There's the channel Exosphere on the matrix.org home server. Uh, with that, uh, Julian, take it away. Thanks. So uh, I don't think anybody needs to convince us that uh, researchers uh, want to and need to use cloud computing, elastic compute. Uh, unfortunately, Horizon was not designed for, for researchers in mind. Uh, they have to use advanced virtual, virtual networking concepts and SSH keys when they have to use Horizon. It's not, it's not pretty to watch. Uh, so we want Exosphere to be the easiest way to create and manage OpenStack uh, resources. And uh, we both work very closely with researchers all the way along product development to ensure that it works well for researchers. Uh, knowing that uh, we can't solve all user interface issues with uh, our GUIs, we, we, let, uh, we want to make sure that we get out of the way and allow people to go and use um, OpenStack directly if we need to. So uh, yeah, also one of our points that we'd like to make easy from the beginning was to make it easy for institutions to make uh, create a customized version of Exosphere. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so now let's uh, jump into the demo. Uh, this is Exosphere running in my web browser, trusting you all can see it. Uh, there is, there's no magic here. This is just a web application, client-side web application that's talking directly to OpenStack clouds um, via a proxy server so that the browser can make secure connections, secure API calls. All the brains, all the code is running right here uh, on try.exosphere.app. So this is what our login prompt looks like. Uh, just to show you that there's no magic, you enter your keystone credentials here. We use uh, unscoped tokens and application credentials, so you don't need to specify a project. We show you a list of all of your projects, and you get to multi-select uh, which ones you'd like to log into. Uh, you can drop an OpenRC file here. Uh, we also support single sign-on with uh, OpenID Connect, which we'll show you in a couple minutes. So let's go ahead and launch a server. Actually, first, I'll show you that I'm logged in right now to both regions of Jetstream Cloud at Indiana University and Texas Advanced Computing Center. I'm also logged into the Nectar uh, Australian Research Cloud and uh, Tombstone Cloud at Cyverse, which is hosted at University of Arizona. So I'm logged into four different OpenStack providers across three different organizations all in the same user interface. You can manage all of these from the same place. All right, so creating an instance. I'm choosing an Ubuntu 20. And I get to choose a name. Wow, that's a good one. But I'm going to call this high PTG. Uh, get to choose a size. Uh, you can create a volume back server, choose a root disk size. Uh, we'll just pick the default for now. I can create more than one server at a time. Let's create two of them. Uh, graphical desktop environment, this is a feature in progress now. Um, we've got some advanced options. I'm going to skip the operating system updates, uh, despite the warning, just to make this faster. Uh, choose an SSH key because I have one. But again, that's not needed. A uh, user does not need to know anything about SSH key pairs to use Exosphere. We offer a one-click uh, shell uh, terminal in their browser. Um, and I'll show you how that works. So these two instances have just been created. They'll take a couple of minutes to deploy, actually four or five minutes. So let's skip ahead to one that's already done. Uh, here's a test instance. We've got no volumes attached, but Exosphere lets you create and attach a volume. We've got this nice terminal. Uh, this is provided by software called Apache Guacamole. Um, basically, it's a, it's a terminal in your browser. It supports copy and paste. Uh, it supports a few different, it's got a graphical file browser too, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can upload and download files from this interface all in your browser. You don't need to learn about SCP or FTP. 
Um, we do also expose native SSH for people who want that. You can log in with this password. It's a big, ugly, but hopefully strong password. We expose the console. If you need to troubleshoot, uh, you can actually log in on the console with this password if the instance loses network access or something. Uh, we support most of the OpenStack server actions, at least those that we think make sense for most users. Uh, and we also show pretty graphs. We have system CPU memory and file system usage. We can see this instance is not doing much. It's sitting idle. But if it was busy, we would see that it's busy. We would know maybe we need to resize this or look at what's going on. We're just trying to expose these things, make them more obvious to folks who, uh, who need to use this and get stuff done. OK, uh, Julian, why don't you talk about our architecture? We'll wait a couple minutes for these to finish deploying. Uh, unmute yourself, Julian. Oh, there we go. Uh, so uh, as uh, I mentioned earlier, Exosphere is very easy to deploy because it is a, entirely a, a client application. There are no server-side components that is not uh, already provided by OpenStack. We have a couple of simple proxies in order to do a cores uh, requests with the OpenStack APIs and a user application proxy to have secure, easy access to RStudio, Jupyter Hub, things like that. Um, so it can be hosted on any service that can host static files like GitHub pages or GitLab. And uh, the uh, Elm is written, uh, sorry, Exifer is written in Elm, which is a, a pure functional statically typed programming language. It generates HTML and JavaScript. And because of the static type uh, checker, there are no runtime exceptions, which is very nice for us for a, a maintainable code base. And yeah, we make it very easy to white label the application. Uh, Seema shows the X, this is the Jetstream version. And that is just uh, set up by a simple JSON file that contains branding, localization, help resource links, things like that. And I think that's it for me. All right, so a bit about our future plans. This is a glimpse of our roadmap, uh, which you can shape and influence uh, as community members. Um, but what we've got so far is an integration with data science workbenches, uh, including Jupyter Hub and RStudio, possibly others, GPU accelerated streaming desktops, uh, which we will deliver with just one click from the interface, uh, also using Guacamole, um, using GPUs at Jetstream and other research clouds. Uh, support more of the OpenStack API. Um, there's stuff that we just have to build the buttons and API calls for, so that's just work to do. Uh, community, community curated recipes for re producible workflows. Uh, we have a bunch of ideas on this. We haven't built anything yet, but we think we understand how other solutions fall short, and we think we can help. Uh, supporting containers as first class objects. So instead of creating an instance to create a container in the instance, you can just create a container and the plumbing all happens for you. Uh, more single sign-on integrations. Uh, like I said, we already do uh, OpenID Connect uh, with the Jetstream specific site. You can add your Exceed account that way, but uh, we're, gonna add, we, we're open to adding more and we're interested to hear what other people use. Uh, enhancements for sensitive and regulated data. This is like ITAR, HIPAA, FERPA type stuff. Um, just a few tweaks, uh, well, more than tweaks to make to support those. Uh, custom theme builder. Uh, so you can already build a custom theme by writing JSON manually. Uh, we're also going to build a graphical theme builder. So you pick your colors and upload a picture. Uh, finally, workshop specific features. This will be. Um, Features to help workshop facilitators uh, to mentor participants, uh, help people who might be stuck, um, help workshop participants have a smoother experience. OK, uh, back to Julian for our wrap up and call to action. Uh, so uh, we would like you to try out um, uh, Exosphere yourself. You just, uh, whatever OpenStack you have access to. Uh, engage with us. We'd like you to, uh, we have a very open development process guided by people's needs. We'd like to hear about your community's needs and how, um, how we can help researchers. So yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity. Yep. And just so you all know, these servers, these instances did finish deploying. Uh, so we're about six minutes in. Um, so uh, the demo worked. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
COVID to see guys.